Hey guys, I'm going to continue on. This is an account takeover. I just did a massive summoning session and now I'm going to have a look at guild boss. I really want to see how much I can boost this guy. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to see how his team functions right now. Just in auto play, I'm going to cancel it before the end so I don't waste his attack. And yeah, then we'll see if we can figure anything out and find ways to give him a better score. Places Pyros down quite fast. Places down Wrath, Zilla 2... Arrogant Zilla 2, then Wrath, Salazar places these guys down last. I think we can optimize that a little bit. As you can see, Dolores starts with a much lower rage cap than these guys do, so I typically put her down first. Oh, he has a privilege card, so he's now got 3.5 times auto, so I'm going to be even keener of eyes. Another thing, if you're looking at these, definitely set your camera angle to give yourself a bit more viewing space. Again, I tend to try to play some of these guys sooner because of the rage timers. It's just nicer to line up. So what I'm going to be looking for is when he starts his ult rotations and if he manages to buy two ults on his Zilla 2. I think his Zilla 2 is probably very high awakening so she's probably got plenty of time. But let's see on the timings. Maybe there's something we can do here. He's not getting two ults during Zilla 2's ult. Like two Pyros ults going off. So that's something we can work on and improve there. This one goes up and yeah again. Cool. So yeah there's definitely some gains we can make here. That's pretty good start. Mainly it's going to be focusing on timing things a little bit tighter so that Zilla 2 fires her ult twice and seeing if we can get in more Dolores ults because some of his ults are going off without Dolores' ult being up. So it's quite promising so far. I think we're going to make massive gains when we tweak this team. But I want to see how it performs at the moment by itself. Oh, I was concerned there. That nearly didn't go well. I guess it's the ult landed a little bit later than I was expecting. So, cool. That one may have got two ults off from Zilla 2 there, so that's not too bad. Having a bit of trouble keeping people alive. Dolores is getting awfully low. And I'm a bit scared because this is quite fast. I don't want to risk it. You have to stop at three seconds or, you, or you'll burn it. So we're going to quit the battle here. There's five seconds left. Just under 22k blood. So my goal is going to be at least 26k. I'm pushing for 26k. Already you can see there's a problem. Zilla 2 is doing way too little damage. 30 million damage is nowhere near enough for a Zilla 2. Salazar is doing not a lot. There's, there's definitely some issues here that we can look at and see if we can resolve. So let's have a look at the gearing and see what we can do about this. Actually, before we do that, let's see who else he has on his team. It's weird. It doesn't seem to have saved his guild boss team, so he probably hasn't played with it recently. So let's see. Let's just pick the heroes I think should be in the team, and then we'll figure it out after that. So that's that sorted out. Now we need our Pyros go with these two here and then we need our Dolores and we need our hollow so that's the team we've got at the moment we already have our eight heroes to place down we've got the five on the bottom who are all going to be down and we've got the three up here who are going to be down so we don't have any more space to place any more heroes if this is the team that we're going to be using we're not going to be placing torador so we have one more slot that we technically don't need however however we do want extra attack speed from the the nightmare faction so we'll take more nightmare characters so my initial test to improving it Things weren't quite lining up, and I want to check to make sure that things are in good order. So let's have a look at what we got. We have an Awakened Free Salazar, which is fantastic. That means the bleed duration is going to be up a lot. Salazar does have Scarlet Hunt. Zilla 2 does have Scarlet Hunt. Even Arrogance has a maxed Scarlet Hunt. That is very good. But now the main things I want to look at are Pyrus, Hollow, and Dolores. Dolores, how are we doing? Okay, Dolores does not have the most attack. Are we doing okay? So not much attack in the substats. We've got a bit on one of them. How about this for attack percent? Not much there and a bit there. And we have got a set which is increasing max HP and healing effect, which is not ideal for Dolores. Dolores is an incredibly important character to use. Obviously he can't farm Invigoration yet, so I shouldn't be checking that. So the best bet we can do is Glacier. What have we got going from Glacier? So we'll move over. Attack bonus, a bunch of unupgraded Glacier gear. So what we're looking for is attack bonus with rage regen and ideally a bunch of HP on it. This one has attack bonus on it. So let's just roll this. I don't care too much about the healing effect right now. Boosting Dolores' attack up enough will be enough to compensate. And of course you need HP percent for Glacier. So if this rolls purple or similar to the attack we just got, then this could be a good piece to start with. Two hours later okay so many hours of messing about with gear upgrading stuff deleting stuff just a lot of toying around with gear sets and characters and whatnot i am going to give this another go i did do a run just now and it did get to about 25k 25 and a half thousand blood on nightmare force so it was not a bad result 
but I want to go a bit further. I managed to get a bit further on Guild Boss on my own account as well by using Elowin instead of Hollow. It's a little bit trickier in some ways, but personally I prefer it overall because you don't have to mess about with Hollow's ult, you don't have to worry about Rage Regen because Elowin is just passively there all the time, 1% a second at max skill, versus Hollow where you need to be using it at the right time and activating it at the right time. I think Elowin is just a bit better because of the consistency. The problem being, of course, you can't have everyone inside the, her range because it's not a very wide range like Hollow, but I still think it's better. For this one, I'll be leaving Abomination outside of the range because his ultimate doesn't actually need Rage Regen really. Once he hits it for the second time, it will be permanent. Permanent. So it doesn't matter too much if he's not inside Elowin's range, so Abomination is actually a really good hero for this. Alright, so let's give it a go. I'm going to walk through how I'm placing things and why I'm doing them in the way that I'm doing them, and hopefully we can break 25.5. I want to get to like 27 or so. I think that's a fair goal. So I always set the camera like this, and then I just restart the run so it gives me a little bit more time to place things. So I will drop down my Zilla 2 first, and then Salazar, Abomination, or we'll put down Dolores, I'll put down... Elowin facing up, and then I chuck down my Nightmare Fighters so I can get the attack speed boost and then I can despawn them. I probably should have placed Satram there instead because his ult takes a bit longer to charge up, but that's pretty much what I'm looking for. So the main thing to look at is if you select Elowin, you can see her range. Inside this, she's granting 1% rage regen a second, which is really nice, and these are all the people who really, really need that. So I am pretty happy with how that placement's gone. I think. I need to wait a little bit because I need Dolores' ult to be ready before I fire the first ultimate off from Pyros. So, but since we're nearly there anyway, I'm just going to fire it now. And we'll do this one. And then just as this is about to slam, we'll pop Zilla 2's. So that's all going quite smooth. And then when we're near halfway on Pyros' ult, this bar here, we'll fire Dolores. And then we'll ult with Satram after that lands, and then we'll ult with Salazar. That's kind of the main rotation. And then the next most important part of this is I need to fire Pyros' ultimate a second time while Zilla 2's ultimate is still active, just to maximize the benefits of Zilla 2's ultimate. So there we go. That's the second one firing, and we have plenty of time on Zilla 2's ult, so that's lined up perfectly. I'm very happy with that. I did a bunch of regearing on this account. I'm using Abomination instead of Arrogance. And just to go into that a bit more, I really like Arrogance. Arrogance is fantastic. On my account, I personally use Arrogance over Abomination. However, on this account, his Abomination is Awakened 5, which is really powerful. And his Arrogance is also very powerful at Awakened 5, but his is Awakened 2. So in that circumstance, I think Abomination is better. So that's why we have Abomination. In the re-gearing, unfortunately, Dolores got almost no rage regen. This is not ideal. She should have more rage regen. I just couldn't make it work at the time with the gear that we have available on this account. Though I'm sure that will change very quickly. So, we're back here. Normally on my account, I would ult with Dolores at this point. But, okay, let's give it a go. Let's see what happens. And let's ult once with Pyros and see how that goes. And we can get one off with Salazar as well. I don't really want to ult with anyone else though because we're going to have to be firing everyone's ults in 20 seconds. So you can see Dolores is going to be back. I think that's because we've got a proc though, which is a bit messy on timings. It's not ideal to rely on the Awakened 5 proc because that kind of messes up your auto run. So hopefully that's not the case. So now I'm firing Pyros' ult halfway. And we proc Nocturnes, because you have to proc his first if, if you want to. You don't have to use Nocturnes, it's not a big deal. The main one is Zilla 2. But now on the second time around, we can actually use Zilla 2's ult during the channel, which makes things a lot easier. I don't know why, it feels like a bug. But anyway, it means she's stuck for less time. So that's good enough. We'll just do that, because I don't want to miss my timing on Dolores. So we'll just do that now. And then we fire Cetram. And that's pretty smooth. Everything there I'm, I'm quite happy with. One thing that's a little bit concerning is Abomination's taking a bunch of damage. Thankfully we have Wood Elves now, so that helps a bit. But I'll have to be mindful of that for the rest of the run. And let's see, we have Salazar and Pyros coming back up pretty soon. We do definitely want to catch this Pyros ult. That's probably the most important part of this strategy. And there we go. And it's quite tight to try to fire another Dolores ult, and especially with this one being quite undergeared on Rage Regen, massively undergeared on Rage Regen, I'm not going to risk it. I don't want to mess up the uh, timing of things. So we're going to hold off. We need to fire everything in 30 seconds, and I don't believe this one will be recovered in time. 
So for the time being, I'm just going to leave everything as it is. Maybe we can get off one Salazar ult. Cool. So far, it's going pretty well. Now we need to get ready for firing everything. So here we go. Probably about here is good. Just before the stick is about to slam, we can do Nocturne's ult. So there we go. Zilla 2. And now we're just waiting here for the Pyros and Dolores ult. Looks good enough, so we'll do it there. You can see it fires just as the shield comes up. We can ult on Setram. Salazar was a little bit premature. Heal again because I'm a bit worried about Abomination. I've heard that this still reaches Abomination the heal. I'm not entirely sure on. Broke the shield with plenty of space remaining. We're at 16k blood at the moment. That'll bump up again because we just broke the third shield. And now I need to worry about getting the Pyros ult off again while we have Zilla 2 up. So that's pretty good timing there. Yeah, we're doing way better this time. This is going much better than before. Happy days. I'm just going to blow the Salazar ult straight off because I want to save Dolores' ult a little bit. It's not super important to do this, but I kind of want to anyway. Her ult lasts 22 seconds, so I have a bit of time. Cool, I'm just, I always get nervous at this point because I don't want to balls it up right at the end. Come on, give me a proc, Elowin. We need to get Zilla 2 ready. I think we're good. I think this is plenty fine. So there we have it. And now we're near the end, we can ult because that's going to last up to just before the thing ends. We ult here with Satram. Do this ult because it's nice too. And then now we can ult with Salazar. We have 20 seconds left. Which is pretty good. Unfortunately, the Pyros won't be available to ult again. But hey, look. Nice. Much improvement. Much improvement. Beautiful. 27,000. We hit pretty much what my goal was. So I'm actually quite happy with that. I, I really wanted to get him to 30k. But I just, I'm not capable of it at the moment. Unfortunately, my strategies are inferior. But 27k, I'm happy with that. That's a pretty good result. So, yeah. Good days. You can see there's two attacks because I, I used another strategy prior to this. But I'm happy. I think that's a good result. Just to go over the gearing a bit on the character so you can see the stats. Obviously, Awakened 5 Abomination. I put him into a bunch of Glacier gear. A bunch of it's quite mixed. You see we're relying quite heavily on crit rate bangles. And a bunch of subs are missing. So there's no crit rate on this one. There's no crit rate on this one which is you know we can make up for that because we have a crit rate banger but we're kind of dropping in other stats because of it but you know it's still pretty good it's not bad and you know awakened <laughs> five goes a long way similar deal with zilla 2 though i put her in the fatality set because i think this is probably one of the best sets on this account so this is a nice piece here with purples closer to yellow than purple so that's really good and here we've got both we've got three subs in purple again missing crit damage but you know it's not a bad pairing of stats so i quite like this this account does have really good weapons there's a bunch of different stuff in the new sets which i haven't even farmed on my account yet so zilla 2 is not too bad obviously five awakenings something else that's good to know is this account has scarlet hunts at level 25 on all three of the main fighters that are down so that's going a very long way a really really big powerful benefit there and on Salazar, when I re-geared his Salazar, I went for full broken set just because I really wanted to get as much stats as I could on Salazar. I wanted to make sure we were getting some, some good subs and getting some good attack speed. Well, getting some attack speed, you know, there, it's lacking a fair bit of the accessory sets on this account, but that's going to be changing very soon. So we'll go over in the next video. Other than that, Torador, I didn't bother re-gearing. He's kind of just there for the Lord benefit, so I didn't touch him. Nocturne, I did re-gear. I put him in the Night Terror set that was previously on the Zilla 2. The reason for that is, and I haven't confirmed this, but I'm, uh, it's kind of an assumption. I think during the charge from Pyros' ultimate for three seconds, the Night Terror buff will run out on Zilla 2. So I wanted to put it on someone that that was less impactful on. So I thought, you know, it'd be pretty good on Nocturne, who's going to be decent enough without just relying on that, because it does a lot of damage on Zilla 2. One of the reasons it's so powerful on Zilla 2, the Pyros ult, is because she has this passive Empress Might, charges energy after three seconds of not dealing damage so you know that's a pretty good in conjunction with pyros ult for zilla 2 obviously and pyros has a ajax's rage i didn't realize this was only level 10 he should really have this one equipped i didn't notice that i'm just going to put that over now so maybe he'll get some gains the next time he autos that arrogance is being used to add extra attack speed from the lord benefit but he's not actually being placed to do damage i don't remember touching this gear at all 
if I did it all. Maybe I did. I, I don't remember. I, I tweaked so much stuff, but he's not being placed, so it doesn't really matter anyway. Elowin's gear has not been tweaked. I did tweak her for a Gear Raid 2 run, but I'll be making a video on that separately, so you can look forward to that one next. Besides that, I didn't tweak Pyros at all because Pyros already has a Wisdom set, which is pretty good for Pyros. Pyros isn't really one for damage, but I didn't really want to tweak this too much. Ideally, a bit more Rage Regen is quite nice on Pyros, but I, you know, again, I, I didn't want to touch too many things and make a mess of it. Dolores, I completely re-geared her accessories. Again, this is not great because she has zero Rage Regen, which is pretty poor, but I wanted to maximize attack on this character, and this was the best way to do it, really. A bunch of attack percent glaciers with attack flat subs, as well as some HP bonuses where I could get hold of it. Mainly because I was a bit worried about Dolores' health being so low all the time, um, and this kind of helped it a bit, but pretty much I just wanted as much attack as possible because I wanted to use her in Gear Raid 2 as well. So it's just good to have a very powerful Dolores, but again, you really do want a lot more Rage Regen than this one has. And last one I missed at the top is Setram. I don't remember if I re-geared Setram. I think I actually left Setram the way he was. I think, yeah, I think I left him because his gear is not bad by any stretch. Nearly 200% flat attack, 100% crit rate, 146% bonus crit damage, 134 attack speed. It's actually pretty well geared. So, yeah, I left him as is. Obviously, again, you kind of want to push away from using crit rate bangles, but the subs on this are quite good. It has, you know, four really good things on it, so no problems there at all. So yeah, that's the gearing of the characters, and the Setram has a level 25 Never Messenger, which helps quite a lot. Another thing I wanted to do to improve this account a bit was to push up the Gift of Hope on Dolores, getting this to level 25. Yeah, this is just when you're trying to min-max. It helps quite a bit, you know, the flat attack helps push into her ultimate to boost attack a bit more. But that pretty much covers the gear of the characters. It's been quite an interesting one. I may not seem it to some of you guys, but if you're really late game and you're pushing for Nightmare 4 progress, then you really want to have as much good stats as you possibly can. And some of the gears on this account is, is a bit tricky to do that with, because you can't can't get away from a crit bangle and crit rate bangles are fantastic if you're kind of earlier in the game but the later you get because crit rate is capped you want to make the most out of the rest of your stats right and if you have 20 percent in all five of your items then you won't need a crit rate bangle so that's kind of the goal that's how i gear most of my characters and my salazar especially is quite strong so if we go to the world rankings and now i've just uh, allowed him to overtake me so i'm pushing myself down the ladder here my salazar has quite high bp is using an attack bonus bangle and everything else is you know crit damage and attack again i'm just trying to maximize as much damage as i possibly can and i'm overdoing it on crit rate i'm nine percent over but that's because i have a golden sub here but that's just kind of how the gear rolled out i'm maximizing my salazar as much as possible because for me salazar does quite a bit of damage anyway yeah that's that's been the account takeover for the guild boss it's been quite a fun challenge trying to you know work out what you can and can't do with a different account. It's beautiful to see Setram just being such a monster. It's great to see Abomination doing so much work as well. And we definitely need to work on getting the Zilla 2 to be more effective. More Zilla 2 ults ideally, but I'm, I didn't want to risk the timings too much. I think there's definitely optimization to be made there and better gearing as well. But it was quite a fun challenge. It's nice to, to work on some other stuff that isn't just your account for once. So that was plenty fun. And next I'll be making a video on Gear Rage 2, helping him get through 19 and hopefully to 21. So stay tuned to see that one. Thank you very much, guys. Have a lovely one. Take care and bye-bye.